Salutations everyone, this is Razor bringing you guys another Overwatch video where today we're talking about solo queue matchmaking meta. There's so many videos out there of people telling you, oh this is how you climb in solo queue, like it's so simple that oh you just gotta remember these three things or these 20 things and you'll, you'll gain SR. It's not that simple, there's just so many random things that you have no control over. Number one being your teammates. Your teammates are gonna be usually the main reason that you win or lose because it's a team game. There's only so much that one person can do. So all those videos out there saying, this is how you rank up from bronze to masters. It's just a clickbait. It's just a bunch of bullshit. There is no magical tip that will help you. You can get more mechanically skilled at you know a certain hero or you know learn the meta and how, to, and how that should be played but none of that is really applicable to solo queue matchmaking. So here I'm gonna give you some simple rules that will help you. There are no magical tips and everyone knows that I don't have the greatest win percentage or ELO experience, but playing against the enemy, your number one enemy of course being your own teammates, I've you know a little bit experience with and the best way uh, to win is try to have everyone on the same page, have a good team comp, a little bit of communication, coordinate your ultimates, and work together. That is very, very difficult to do in solo queue, uh, especially if people aren't communicating, people are throwing hard with their Hanzos and their Genjis and their gobbledygooks. So we have a few tips here to tell you guys, my, through my experience, what are the good, better steps to make to play with other people in solo queue. And number one is based off of communication. Ask if anybody has a mic. You know, people are gonna be within the voice channel, but a lot of them, most of them, most of the time will not be talking because, uh, you know, they, they don't wanna be called out because they're a squeaker or because they're a girl or they have a funny voice or uh, they don't want everybody to yell at them immediately. There's a lot of reasons why people do not uh, wish to speak even though they have the ability to. But, you know, it's always worth asking, you know, does everybody have a mic? Or oftentimes other people will ask that question. And sometimes that's all it that all it takes. I've had games where everyone's in the voice chat, but nobody's talking. But you know, and I've had games where it starts off the first 10 seconds, no one's talking, and then someone asks, Does anyone have a mic? Like three people chime in, and then we all start talking and communicating. So respond to those questions and you know, ask them your ask them yourself if uh you know if anybody has, has a mic because communication is a very invaluable part of this game and will help you go far another thing that you're going to have to take into consideration if you are solo queuing from bronze to top 500 obviously if you're in top 500 you're not listening to this video because you don't have any problems but uh if you're solo queuing you're gonna be a healer or a tank so deal with it uh, you know, there's probably only a 5% chance that you are going to play DPS. Obviously not everyone is a DPS player, but way more people want to play DPS than there are available opportunities where that is a good idea for everybody to pick. And it's the most common thing that people are going to want to play is everyone wants to play DPS. Everyone wants to be Genji. It's always an instant lock Genji. So most of your time, you're going to be a tank or a healer. You could try... You know, if there haven't been two DPS slots, you know, in the in a situation where two DPS seems to be ideal, where you could try to pick a DPS, and if nobody picks the third DPS, then you're gravy, baby. But most of the time, someone will come there with their Junkrat, their Widow, their Genji, their Genji or their Genji, and you're just going to have to switch off, or they'll go Symmetra or Torbjorn or something. And uh, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things is to... Speak in positives, not in negatives. Obviously, your teammates are not going to be amazing all of the time. This is not to say, hey, good job, going one and eight. Obviously, that's facetious sounding because it is. But this isn't to say that every you need to act like you're on the set of Blue's Clues and everything needs to be all hunky-dory. Just speak in positives instead of negatives. Instead of saying, yo, Hanzo, you're trash, switch. Instead of saying that, you could say, it would be really cool if we had a soldier here to deal with the Farah. Or, is anybody really good at soldier? 
instead of you know trying to call someone out and tilting them that is one of the main things that you are going to try to avoid in these in these tips that i have you is you don't want your team to get tilted off the face of the earth and they're just going to throw so hard that it doesn't matter if you're freaking Sabiolbi, you are not going to carry that team if they're throwing as hard as possible so always try to do your best not to have your team be tilted and this isn't the onus isn't on you but do not take steps to get people tilted by yelling at them by singling them out by calling them trash by comparing your stats to their stats or bragging oh i have gold limbs how come nobody's carrying their weight you know there's a lot of factors that go into that and medals don't mean real shit Another thing is to play around the randos bad picks you know synergize so you're gonna get Torbjorns. You're gonna get Torbjorns. That's just the way that it is. So if you're in a position like defense where Torbjorn can be serviceable, pick Orisa. You're gonna need a tank and most people are not gonna pick Orisa. If they do pick a tank, they'll typically pick Roadhog even though he's not really a tank. People think that he is. Um, and you know, maybe some people will pick D.Va or someone will pick Zarya, you know, an off tank. That's really not gonna help synergize with the Torbjorns, but if I have a Torbjorn on my team, I was like, all right, I know he's not going to switch because he's a Torbjorn main. You know, a Torbjorn no trick because Torbjorn players are just not even good at playing Torbjorn. That's just how it is. I don't I don't, I don't, don't tell them how to play. They just play the, the way that they want. And he's not a fantastic character that's really good in a lot of situations. So it's not entirely their fault. But I will try to prop up my teammates. If someone picks a Torbjorn and we're on, say, Defense Anubis, point one, I'll pick Orisa. Put the barrier in front of the turret, help him do his job. If I have a Widowmaker on my team, and uh, we already have two tanks, say, and I need to pick a healer, you know what, I'll go Mercy, and power boost the Widow a little bit, just to make them, just to prop them up, help them do the job that they should be doing. They're not going to hit a ton of headshots, I wouldn't be hitting a ton of headshots if I was Widow, most people aren't Fleta, you know, that's just the way that it works. So... You know, power boost them and get value out of the Widow. And, uh, you know, you could say this about Hanzo or Soldier or McCree. You know, anyone with a long range threat is, you know, pick Mercy and power boost them. Mercy is one of the best carry heroes in the game, even now, because of her healing potential. The fact that she's the only character that can res. Res is insanely important. Valkyrie is still team fight winning. You can self peel with Guardian Angel. There's obviously there's, you know some characters that you can learn that will definitely help you in the solo queue two of the big ones are orisa and mercy because everyone can play around a mercy she kind of fits anywhere and orisa throws down the shield and doesn't have to worry about teammates doing damage for her like if you were ryan she can do a little bit of damage and some cc herself um but we're gonna try to get a little bit more general than that so i would say if you don't want to have the Hanzos and the Torbjorns and the Symmetras on your team, suggest generally for a character. Instead of saying, hey Sim, can you switch to Farah? Say, hey, can anyone play a Farah? And then maybe one of your characters, maybe it's the Sim main, uh, switches over to a far or you know whatever character that you want hey this is, can anybody play reaper i think reaper works really well here speaking in positives not in negatives hey instead of saying hey may is trash on this point just throw it out there hey i think far will be really good here or yo junkrat would be really good in this choke point so suggest generally for a character we could get a little bit more specific once the game has started so all that is like pre-game stuff so another thing when it comes to building your team is that if you're playing with a four stack or especially a five stack, just ask them what they want you to be. Because if you're playing with, you know, five people, generally they've played with each other a lot. They're used to playing certain characters and certain comps. So try to just fit into the role that they need, that they require. Instead of saying, I'm going to be Tracer, everyone needs to play around that. No, 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 no. They already have synergy. They're already communicating with each other. And they are going to have some sort of idea on how to play as a team, more so than just five randoms. So if you get a team of five or a team of four, you know, a big team, then just ask, hey, what do you guys want me to be? I'm here to help you. You guys already kind of have a built-in team here. I just want to help facilitate that instead of saying, 
you know, I'm going to pick Mercy because I love playing Mercy. Well, what if they have a only uh, they have a player that can only play Mercy? Then you're taking that away from them and you're kind of hurting the team instead of saying, you know, what do you guys need? Oh, yo, to be a, a Zenyatta. Most of the time, if you're playing with like a four or five stack, they'll mostly be super friendly and say, hey, play what you want, man. Or, you know, whatever you feel like or whatever you're good with. They're usually pretty good about that. In my experience, sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they will not communicate. But just try to just fill fill in that role that is missing in that four or five stack team another one don't voice displeasure or ask someone to switch you don't want to tilt your teammates so just speak in generalizations and try to be positive instead of negative do not ask someone to switch and just wait for things not to work before signaling someone out in instead of saying hey widow can you switch uh, widows suck. You know, we all have bad, you know, Hanzo, can you switch? We all get those people. Instead of saying that, which you could just tilt them, and then they just start throwing before the game even starts, you could say, you could wait till it doesn't work, and then say, hey, Hanzo, do you think you can go soldier here? Instead of saying, yo, Hanzo, you're trash, switch to whatever. Just... Be positive instead of negative and say, hey, can you go? Or, yo, are you a really good reaper? Because I think we could destroy them. Do not uh, speak neg negatively about your own team. Speak negatively about the enemy team. Yo, their Reinhardt is trash. Let's get rid of the Mercy and then he will crumble. Instead of saying, you idiots, why aren't you killing the Mercy? Just call the enemy team bad. Don't call your own team bad. Coordinate ults first and foremost. That is the most important thing at matchmaking. Even if they aren't amazing, you know, it, it's not. It doesn't have to be a grav dragon in order to be an amazing combination. Combining any sort of ults will can totally win a team fight in matchmaking because things are just so random. Another thing is let the team know what the win condition is. Let them know, you know, we need to kill this Farah because she keeps killing our Lucio or our Orisa or me. Kill that Rhine, because without him, that, that's the only tank they have. So let's just kill the Rhine, and we'll snowball from there. Or, hey guys, we need to take the high ground. Just let them know what the win condition is. Speak in positives, not in negatives, and do your best not to tilt people, because people are easily tilted, and they will throw super duper quickly and super duper hard. We've all seen it. So just give a little bit of positive reinforcement here and there. Yo, May, that was a really great ice wall. We stopped, we, you know, got that diva from escaping, you know, oh, awesome dead eye. Just a little bit of positivity can go a long way to show that you are noticing when they do something good instead of someone, you know, just like not talking the whole time and then be like, well, I was trying to keep everybody alive, but y'all kept going in and dying. If you let them know just little subtle things here and there that you acknowledge when they do well, then less chances that they tilt and start throwing because you know we don't we can't make everybody happy but we can do our best to not make people throw our games for us because we all want that sr and in the end that's should be everyone's goal that's in a competitive playlist that is not always going to be the case there's always going to be there's some people who say eh, whatever i don't even care they're not in the right game type or people that uh Hey, I just want to play Bastion on anything. They're not in the right game mode for that. So there's only so much that we can do. But this is just, you know, a few things that I've found help a little bit. And really, that's the only thing that you can do as one person playing against millions of randoms. You never know what you're going to get. Life is like a box of Hanzo mains. Some are going to be good. But uh, most of them are going to be bad, so try to help them to not be useless.